As we study the book of Revelation, it's really important to understand the narrative of Scripture, not just the narrative of Revelation, but the narrative of the Old and the New Testament from beginning to end, from Genesis to Revelation. Uh, when we know the narrative of Scripture, we're actually helped by uh, this narrative in the flow of God's story uh, in interpreting and helping to apply the things that God has for us in the book of Revelation. You see, John is using imagery. It's an apocalyptic book, and so he's using imagery that is not new to him. It is actually uh, something that is rooted, these images, in the Old Testaments. Uh, the prophets Isaiah, Ezekiel, Daniel, they all spoke of the last things, the things that would happen in that great day, on that great day of judgment. It's a study of the last things. We talked about this earlier in another video about eschatology, the study of the last things. But as we zoom out of the book of Revelation and we understand the narrative of, narrative of redemptive history, we, we begin to see some of the things that are in the redemptive story that John is mapping out for us in the book of Revelation. And so here's a quick view of the narrative of Scripture. There's all sorts of ways to approach uh, the, the, the Bible in terms of understanding its, its connection points, but this is a broad sketch, the basis with which we can understand and pull from uh, the Bible uh, a framework uh, that we are able to reference to. So in creation, we see that God creates uh, the heavens and the earth. And at that point, we see that history begins. And so there's a line of history that gets closer and closer and closer to two key events in history. The first event is the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. Uh, we still have our dating system rooted around the death of Jesus Christ, the, the life of Jesus Christ, the burial of Jesus Christ. It's central not only to man's history, but to redemptive history, the story of God. And so from beginning to end, the history of man moves closer and closer to this central point of history, which was Christ on the cross. And then it keeps moving to the new creation, from creation to new creation, from um, the, the restoration of all things is what the, the narrative is moving towards. Now, every story has a plot line. You're familiar from English class when we talk about a plot, a narrative. You have characters, you have setting, you have a rising action, then you have a climax, and then after the climax of the story, you have a resolution. Everybody uh, comes together and they hug it out. The, the villain is defeated. The hero walks away with uh, his bride. You know, these are the things that make for a great story. Adventure, war, battles, winning, losing. These things that keep us attentive. Well, the same is true in redemptive history. We see that the climax, the rising action is when is the Messiah going to come? And Jesus Christ comes as the Messiah, but yet he's crucified on the cross. And, and people are wondering, what is it that this man has done for us? And so the conclusion about whether or not he is the hero of this story or not is rooted in the gospel, is that, that he is in fact the hero. And, and the work that he did on the cross is the, the, the finished work of Christ. It is the climax of all of history. And so when mankind falls at the beginning, there's a need for a hero. And so as we rise up to the cross, we, we look for that hero, and in Jesus Christ we see that hero. And then when he is finished on the cross and we see him rise from the dead, all of history from that point on is merely just a wrapping up of loose ends. It's the resolution. It's how is God going to bring all of this story to an end? Well, the way that he does that is he comes in his glory. The second coming of Christ is the final chapter, the, the thing that we're waiting for, the resolution to the whole story. And that's where Jesus ties up all the loose ends of sin and death and evil, and then we move into the new creation. A new history begins. Now, the book of Revelation talks about judgment in multiple ways. It talks about the judgment that happens at the very end. It talks about the judgment that occurred at the cross, as we see in chapter 5, where the lamb that was slain was before the Father. He is worthy because he was slain on the cross, that the judgment of man's sin was on that cross. But it wasn't complete, and it wasn't full. It wasn't on all of creation just yet. But yet we also know that, that judgment fell the moment that Adam Adam and Eve sin. And so judgment happens at the beginning of creation, judgment happens at the cross, and then judgment will finally happen in all of its in, in all of its dread and all of its horror once and for all at the end of history. 
And so as we move through the narrative of Revelation, we begin to see these repetitive things where we see uh, judgment, the lamb that was slain, the, the church being uh, uh, persecuted, the trials and the tribulations. We see that the revelation of John is from cross, the timeline from cross to new creation. And so in the history of mankind, we see that all of Revelation is, is a narrative of the timeline from the cross to the time of the second coming, the judgment, and then the new creation. So when you understand the narrative of Scripture and you think, oh, the climax of history is at the end, no, no, it's important to recognize that the climax of history was at the cross, and we're merely moving towards the resolution of all things. Uh, it's really uh, helpful to understand this because it can, it can help you understand where you're at in the narrative of God and to understand the gospel more clearly because if it's just good news for something that will happen in the future, uh, we're missing part of the gospel. The gospel is the good news of the thing that has already occurred and secures our future, and the revelation of John is just repeating that theme over and over again, how we can be confident in the work that has been accomplished in Christ and and the work that he is doing in our lives now to get us to the point with which the fullness of all things, the restoration of all things is to come. And so the, that's the narrative of Scripture. There's all sorts of different ways to, to, to study it, but hopefully this will be helpful in seeing and hearing the flow of the Bible so that you can understand the book of Revelation. Revelation.